an effective hand washing you do for both for both not just uh washing with ordinary water the water should be clean mm. and safe the water should also be a running one not in the bowl. the bowl if you decide to use the bowl one after use you have to dispose it off so that the next person will have to use it have to use fresh water fresh water fresh water, fresh water. Yeah. right uh, 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 victor um doctor's uh, uh, position is painting very clear picture that we need to wash our hands the proper way it's soap and running water from the ministry of local government and rural development and you are from the environmental health directorate as well there is no running water in our public schools our basic schools no running water in our places of convenience our public toilets no running water our markets they can't access running water how do we make sure that we are effectively washing our hands to fight the disease corona thank you very much like um i think i agree with what doctor said that it doesn't seem much of unwashing around but at the same time i also want to look at the enabling environment like you said there's not enough uh, uh, water so you can you can agree with me that uh, in that regard though the local governments or the assemblies are responsibility to ensure that people have uh, adequate water facility and in the urban areas you have a Ghana water company that's also have got a responsibility but the question is not everybody or not every place that they're able to supply adequate water so it means it's a challenge here there are alternative uh, ways of water like uh, and, uh, the ground water but i think we are not exploring uh, that aspect and uh, notwithstanding the issue here is that of uh, priority because uh, assemblies said their priority as to maybe what they feel it is pressing. But uh, when we look at the trend of corona, it's endemic. It's endemic. Therefore, yes. they cannot have it as a, um, an uh, option. But it's a must. You see, I'm coming back to the question of a policy framework. Assemblies are run like, uh, like TV3, you are here, GTV. You set your program as what you want. So it becomes difficult. When one district or an assembly realize that they have a problem, like we are saying, with our social institutions, uh, like let's say we have funerals, we have adoris, and so on. Because either to the corner was it endemic as we have it, there was no strategy to ensure that people mindset are made that whenever you have these social gatherings where you interact with people, you shake hands, you touch surface, like what you said, there is this place where you do your hand washing before you leave or even before you, you, you take any food that is provided mm. that system is not there because we're not having that problem but now that we realize that these things are now becoming endemic this is a time that we have to move our strategy to these places there was some practice in some areas where after a uh, barrier mm. everybody would do hand washing wash their feet and run before they come and sit down these times we don't see it we don't see it now uh, uh, this is a very important that is not more unicef corolla campaign not more unicef coming together to fight this corolla by august 20, uh, 2012 there were about 19,370 people that had contracted corolla in west africa most of the affected countries were sierra leone which had 9,613 Ghana 5,121, Niger 5,023, Guinea 802. And unfortunately, all these countries we're talking about, the bulk of the disease happened in their capitals. Accra, Ghana, Conakry, Guinea, Sierra Leone, it was Freetown, and Niamey in Niger. And they were found around slum areas. Are you worried? Capitals. Yes, uh, um, that is that very true because uh, we, when you look at the, the dynamism of uh, cholera, like we said, is about the way waste is uh, disposed of, excreta is disposed of, food uh, hygiene, personal and community hygiene practices. And when you come to the slums, realize if the special planning, slum don't make provision enough for these facilities. So you can have even one public toilet and <laughs> So many people, oh, there were hundreds access. of thousands of yes. people have access. So now, if the rest cannot access it, what happens? There are people who get it in wrapper, uh, polythene, and, and throw dispose it them all around. Anyway. 
when you come to waste collection too, it's that difficult to get access because of the uh, uh, the pattern, the, the the housing system. So you get even if you have a waste contractor and it's not able to come up with very good strategy, still you get people who are not be able to assess the services. You see, and then the slum too, the food is prepared under this condition that we're talking about. There's no proper drainage system. Waste water is thrown away anywhere and then get it stagnating. So we have the courier organism thriving. They are conducive environment for it to thrive. So with the least like like doctor said, the compromise on the personal hygiene or food, then we are problem. We have a problem. Right, doctor, um, there is also statistics indicating that we in in this very same West Coast, governments are always waiting on to see the disease rear its ugly head before they start fighting it there is nothing like prevention you are professional are you worried that we are not engaging actively in preventing the disease so that we can control the endemic state of it but we're waiting for it to come every year then you see doctors like you are overwhelmed with these structures doctor what is your position on that uh, it's uh, a very disturbing trend. Uh, we in public health uh, has always been advocating that prevention is better than the managing or treating a case on, on hand, but that's much more expensive. Uh, it's rather unfortunate that in this part of the world, uh, we tend to pay more attention to creative medicine than pre preventive medicine, and that is costing us a lot. Once again, once you look at our disease, uh, profile. Uh, common sense should tell us that where we have to put our money into these preventive uh, uh, approaches in trying to stem the tide of this. Is it that uh, we don't have the money? It's, you see, it is uh, about having strong policies. And I believe that the, with the passage of this new public health law, regulations and law, it may have some weight and bite to people who are supposed to be at the forefront in fighting the issues of uh, institutionalizing preventive measures in all our settings, in all our communities. And uh, generally, uh, we may see a very significant drop in the number of cases we receive at our health facilities. Uh, it is a political issue, uh, so to speak, that, you see, for people to see you there Interventions to put in place as preventive measures takes time to produce results. The creative one or the treatment or management one gives you some sort of immediate results. So the politicians but, uh, are quick to run for that one. Yes. National health, uh, 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 the health insurance scheme takes care. Uh, Coral treatment is free. And so then it means that I am treating it. But it's even not free. What somebody is paying for the treatment anyway? And that is the most reason why we need to, as a nation, prioritize our health needs. And we have to hinge it on public health, where the preventive measures, strategies, promotive health, and rehabilitative health dwells largely. And that is, you see, in public health, and for that matter, uh, in preventive medicine, the target is population, community population. So the effect is quite broad. Yeah. Rather than sitting down in your consulting room for one case to come for you to retreat, only to wait for another case to also come up because our surveillance system is not so fast to respond as the signals come up. And as such, because we don't have restricted movements, people move in our in AR, and you may get an index case here. The next moment, once it's not being picked, up early enough, moves to probably Kumasi, get to Kumasi, pass it on. Somebody passes. So it's a cascading effect that is set in motion. And, and as such, the entire population is somehow uh, affected. Affected. And as he painted a picture, mm -hmm. the 2012 picture, looking at the Corilla picture, was not anything to be enthused about because virtually every month of the year, from January to December, we recorded cases with epi epidemic. Uh, uh, sporadic trends somewhere in May, uh, March, April, and then uh, September, October. So, you see, it has come to stay. And once 
we have observed such a picture we as a nation and for that matter ministry of health needs to sit up and put in place a sustainable strategies to pick up signals in order to i mean level the level effect level the effect of now uh, uh, environmental the uh, uh, environmental health directorate of the ministry of local government sustainable strategies to manage these uh, situations how do we ensure these sustainable structures they're saying that it's a responsibility of government of the institutions to set up the, stru the structures to manage the disease if not so we will live with it as long as we have not done what is right when can we start doing what is right thank you very much i think um, anytime when you have a problem that means we have to plan to solve it so we have problem on hand and uh, we need to solve it you were talking about um, that we were waiting normally wait to have a case but it means we are not doing strategic planning. We are not planning ahead. And like Doctor said, you're supposed to have a tracer system where you can look at something and you see that this is an indicator that there's a likelihood that this thing will occur. And also, when you look at our system with the epidemiological side, like you said, we have not developed the sentinel areas. Like you said, the slums. Even the slums are there, there could be some areas that could be used as sentinel that any time we see these things there, they give us an indication that our things are not going right. With the strategies, I will look at uh, intersectorial collaboration. We have a Minister of Local Government, which is to ensure developments and provide safe environment for uh, the uh, community. Then we have the Ghana Health Service that also comes with the policies in health and so on. They also deal with cases. Right now, if they have information, statistics, data, and there's no way they relate it to the local government, then it means the, the needed information that is needed for planning will be missing. So the local government also will be doing things as empirically agree that we have problem with uh, this uh, maybe waste management. We are looking at it, but it could possibly be that they are having cases that are coming from food, so that with the resources that we have, we can direct it to address food issues. Though we will be tackling the other issues, and then the second uh, strategy that uh, maybe we have to look at is our planning system. The planning, if it's a national development planning commission is there, then we have a district assembly that also have planning, strategic plans. Then how do we see that this very issue should have a strategy, like we have a national strategy planning on cholera prevention or eradication. Then it sits down to the assemblies to come out, depending on their peculiarities, to develop the operational plans, to address it. To address them. Let me quickly ask this question. Uh, some people are saying that if you go to the areas around the coast, the beach, people would want to go to ease themselves, go to toilet at the beach, because the available public toilets are not good enough for them to visit. Somebody would say immediately you come from a public toilet, you should go and take your bath again. And so why should I go there? Why, how can we make sure that the places put up serving the purpose and we enforce that the people visit the place and not the beach thank you very much and if you look at our public toilets um if not for now that they are being uh, a lot where the stl type the septic tank latrine system type and then it was designed specifically for a number of users per day mm -hmm. as population increases we tend to put pressure so it's not serving that purpose and that tend to generate a lot of order so when you are going, you have to take off your shirt before you go in. Fold your trousers. Yes, it's an incentive. So they want to like the open air. Now they are coming out with the water closet system, and that one with, that, with the normal, it can still take care of it. But as far as we still have the technology that is not supporting the uh, uh, convenience of people when they visit the uh, public uh, or a place of convenience, then we have people going to the open spaces. So we need to change the design of the toilet that we have. That will make it friendly. That when people visit, they will feel, they will feel comfortable. And when we talk about that, we're even talking about adding the facilities like hand washing facilities and so on. So the, just that you are talking brilliant and beautiful. Should we create ourselves space and say that by the next five years, 
who have to have enough public toilets with flowing water that can provide that the, the managers can provide soup and everybody who visit would wash his or her hands if we cannot then what is the point paying people and local government environmental health directorate what do you want you are right the the when i'll come to that the, the, the situation here is is about what i said strategic planning mm. the media like the uh, tv3 can use the media to put pressure on policy biggest so that we come out with the policy that all public toilets will meet this standard standard right then it means we set us a tone of uh, standard that we can use to compare assemblies that are performing well or not because it's about capital it's about money so if they like they are going to put their money in the one which will cost them much and yet it is very good and they would like to go for one which is not i mean because of the uh, uh, cost aspect they will be compared by the strategy or by the policy to go by it but coming back to the uh, environmental health as to why there's no uh, they should be maintained or so they will enforce if that is provided the facilities are provided then they will enforce the use then they will give the use education so that the facility can last and then they will ensure that they are also maintained adequately so that people will be comfortable when they come in so i say the point boys to how civil uh, uh, organization media and so on can put pressure on political side and then the other side so that policies can be made that will make it more friendly friendly for yes. people yes. to use them yeah. Do doctor um if i should ask you what can what parting word can you give to us people are listening to you you are an authority you are an expert when you speak they will take your advice if what would you want to tell them in terms in the face in this unicef natmo corolla campaign project what would you want to tell us uh well for my side i will try to uh, encourage the general populace that there's every good reason why not more unicef is pursuing to uh take the educational level of uh, empowering people to take control over their life through the preventive approaches to Corella uh, to the next level. There are several good reasons why they are doing that and we appreciate uh, their partnership. Uh, we in the, in the health sector will try as much as possible to encourage and entreat all and sundry that the issue of hand washing should be so basic and part of our everyday life that any time you get opportunity of washing your hands, please do so, because that will spare you a disease uh, pattern or a disease uh, problem. Uh, hand washing is so simple. Let us not wash uh, just a hand that has been involved in an activity. Both hands are complementary and as such for an effective hand washing uh, procedure. You need the collaboration of both hands to effectively have a very clean hand wash. Uh, Basically, using key soap, the Capolic soap, key soap guardian, in the absence of any effective de detergent or sanitizers, are important. We also encourage institutions that uh, receive very large volumes of people to uh, frequently sanitize their door handles uh, because people frequently use it. And we encourage city authorities to uh, rigorously enforce their bylaws in the uh, area of sanitation and then uh, basic and uh, food hygiene food practices. Hygiene. Right, that is, that is wonderful. That is, it's great to have Victor Akwe uh, from the Ministry of Hello. Local Government and Rural Development and uh, Dr. Jani, a public health specialist uh, from the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Viewers, doctor is telling us to be very particular about hand washing. I think it will be very good to wash your hand before you eat, very good to wash your hand before you prepare food, very good to wash your hand after using the toilet and very excellent after changing baby nappies or even after greeting people from public gathering what good would it do to you i think it would do you a great good if you were a parent an adult you get home the first thing you do is to wash your hands before you pick your baby your your young child that you want to show love to just don't use your dirty hands, contaminated hands that you don't know. Lift the baby, start kissing the baby, and then before then you, you have 
uh, chips in your bag, you remove and then give to the baby, and then the baby will start eating. You have brought something from outside to your baby. Please, hand washing, very important.